Hello everyone, TLSG here, back again with another Daily Marvel Snap video. So today we have a deck that is near and dear to my heart. I can I can I can comfortably say that I really enjoy this style of like last turn flood, flood the board, just push an obscene amount of power onto the board on the last turn of the game. And this one is a Sheenot. It has went through a few iterations. It eventually curved into, for me at least last season, into a Moon Girl Zoo decklist that cut the infinite in favor of like Titania and some other one cost cards that you could double down on and they would be free. And you could just completely cap the board almost every single game. This one is gonna be a little bit more restricted, but in that restriction, it allows for some pretty cool play around potential. So we have a card that I think is, is such a pivotal card in beating Shuri decks, and I don't see it used all that often, and that's Goose. Goose is one that if you're running a deck that you oftentimes want to play those six cost cards or five or four cost cards, it can be really restrictive. But if you're playing a deck that has a couple of She-Hulks, it can have a Demon, a Sunspot to soak some energy, that Goose could be the difference between them being able to drop a Taskmaster, an Arnim Zola, a Red Skull in a lane, and then being able to just drop a Lizard, or a Titania, or a Zero, and just not get anywhere near as much value out of their cards. And then if you can buy that with a Cosmo as well, uh, Shuri might as well just go ahead and retreat then, because they can really only play their big cards in one location. Uh, they won't be able to do the Taskmaster in the Cosmo lane. The rest of the list is a pretty straightforward used to be dirty 30 now it's 29 which is still very very viable especially if you double down on it with the moon girl you have two she hulks uh an infinite and maybe a demon to play you can push quite a bit of power in the process and then that coupled with the fact that we have some of those disruptive factors in the goose and cosmo that's our biggest that's our biggest win condition is being able to block those big plays from the opponent and so ideally you're going to play your sunspot early maybe your hood and viper if you don't have a better play line sometimes you're just going to tempo play your armor and your viper it's not one of those decks where you hold it for a guaranteed use viper is decent at being played on two it's a two three not the best stat per energy but not bad either and so if you don't have a better play line sometimes it's better to get it out of your hand so that you have a better chance of being able to use your moon girl to double down on the resources that you want to being your she hulk demon maybe even infinite in certain scenarios just in case you get leached but overall the deck ran incredibly i ended up over the testing of about 30 to 35 games i ended with just under a 60 percent. so i ended up i think it was like 58.6 or somewhere along there of a, of a win rate and all of them felt very solid they're the ones that i lost i retreated out early because i was i i was able to identify that i was going to be losing i was able to shut down a lot of galactus a lot of shuri decks thanos we do still struggle with so if you're seeing a lot of thanos maybe this isn't the best deck to run right now because leech does hurt it quite a bit reality reality stone hurts it quite a bit but you can hold your own if you get a good roll but overall the deck list runs incredibly if you want to see more of this deck and other decks live make sure to be following us on twitch.tv slash snap that's where we will be going live each and every weekday unless work gets in the way. And so with the brief deck explanation out of the way, we're going to go ahead and jump over into a couple of games. I hope you guys enjoy. All right. First up, we have Gozen. And the first location is the Avengers Compound. So in turn five, we're going to have to play our card there. I almost want to play our Sunspot into one of the unknown locations. We're going to resist. Um, we will be able to play our magic into Avengers Compound on five and just kind of be fine with it. But we're going to go ahead and soak. We do have our Viper. We have Moon Girl, but in this list, there's not it's, there's not always a great use case for Moon Girl. Our curve is relatively high. That just helps increase our high roll or our, our highest potential. Um, so we do get She-Hulk. So if somehow we manage to uh, find a way to reduce the number of cards in our hand enough, I think just playing one would do it, yeah? So we could do Viper. Next turn, we'll have four cards... And so then we'll copy this, this, and this. So I'd rather copy two Cosmos than a Viper. And so we're going to do it this way. We will be able to lean in and duplicate our She-Hulk. Unfortunately, she got she got drawn just after Wakanda Embassy came down. Um, but it is okay. So they use the Lady Sif. They hit their Apocalypse. So we know that they have that. 
to start being enabled. <laughs> Wakanda Embassy does get hit. If they have Swarm in their hand somewhere, that's going to be a big, massive Swarm. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and play Moon Girl. Maybe we can angle for a Cosmo on turn 5. We might also extend the game because we do have our Infinite now. So we'll be able to, if we extend the game, we'll be able to skip. Ooh, what power level was that Swarm? Was that a 7 power Swarm? It went by so fast. That was a very, very hefty, hefty Swarm. I'm going to do She-Hulk. That does give them one additional turn to uh, play their Swarms, which is big. Um, it's very big, very scary. I will be able to do uh, two She-Hulks and an Infinite. If we had a Demon, we could do a Demon, but... Um, we'll be able to do two of those. I, I assume a MODOK comes down here. We're going to change the left location. Typically, a discard deck does not run locational changes. So the Calling Wing, the Apocalypse, which becomes a 20 power card, which is huge. Uh, the Lockjaw, and then the seven power swarms. Now they have four seven power swarms, right? Four seven power swarms that are free. Free 99. Uh, we're going to go ahead and skip one six. Uh, okay, so the Chavez, the Swarm, and then the Swarm. Huge. And then the 20 power Apocalypse that they just have. Massive. <laughs> uh, if we did this and this and this, do we ever find a way to win? I don't think so. Um, a 20 power Apocalypse could swing any of these lanes. Plus, they still have uh, two more 7 power Swarms. We're going to go ahead and give it a shot. Um, they, hit their, they hit an incredibly high roll. Um, so the 20 power apocalypse. Oh, in the left lane. Wait, we might be able to do this. The She-Hulk, the She-Hulk, and then the, the, the Infinite in the right lane. They hit their high roll, and we beat it by one. Oh my gosh. That was a wild game. Absolutely wild. Um, those swarms were massive. The Swordmaster, the Morbius, they hit all of the right plays. We just were barely able to do more. We will take it. It took everything we had. We'll take the four cubes for the first game of the showcase. Let's go ahead and jump over into the next one. All right. Next up, we have KJB, and they are running a Thanos list. Um, KJB is a, a player that's very, very active. And so I, I assume that they have a fair amount of meta knowledge or uh, just kind of what a particular deck might look like. Oh, my gosh. They have played enough Thanos to get that thing black and white. Um, those stones are going to look phenomenal. I'm going to go ahead and play armor in the left lane. They could potentially get some extra energy. Oh, they do. So the mine stone is going to get destroyed and uh, they get two extra energy. A leech could come down and then the time stone. My gosh. So that's five extra energy this turn. They have eight energy on turn three. That's easily a leech. Uh, like easily. Plus they got their draws, plus it cleared the space from the stones. Just ah, huge. Absolutely huge. So they snapped. They have drawn a lot of their resources. They have a lot of energy. They could leech us here pretty easily. I want to stay in just for, just for my hubris. Because um, we could potentially draw the She-Hulk, the Infinite. We can restrict their big plays with our Goose. Um, if they don't end up doing a leech... We just don't have anything to counter those big plays. So if they end up playing Thanos now, if they end up playing Devil Dino now, we're not going to be able to keep pace. And so we are going to go ahead and retreat. KJB, we'll catch you next time. All right. Next up, we have Galisted. They're running a Thanos as well. Was it not bad enough that we just got obliterated uh, by KJB's Thanos, uh, but we get immediately thrown back in? Wow. They pulled into their Lockjaw from Sakaar. That is huge. This little guy ruined our dreams. 0-2 oh, against Thanos. Let's jump over into the next one. So I started running this list because we were seeing nothing but Shuri. We weren't seeing a Thanos for hours, for days. Um, and then we just start getting slammed against Thanos, which uh, is one of the main reasons this deck list didn't do well before. is because it's very susceptible to like leech play. That's how, that's the situation we have at hand. I'm going to go ahead and tempo play our Viper. It's not one that we always want to make sure we have the value from, especially when we have the She-Hulk and Moon Girl. We want to make sure we have the space that we need for the cards that we need. We don't know what they're running. I'm going to go ahead and just drop a Cosmo in the left lane. Um, Sakaar may pull into our magic, might pull into Moon Girl, so we want to make sure we have enough space to accommodate that. Uh, they do play for mid here. 
with a Cosmo of their own. Interesting. So this could be a sure. It pulls into their Shuri for them. Sure, let me go just go ahead and let me go ahead and give you uh, some amazing power here. Now, the only downside here is that they can't Taskmaster in these lanes, and so it's a little bit easier, I suppose. I don't know. That could be Copium. That could be 100% Copium. Uh, but the Shuri getting pulled in by Sakaar is just so unfortunate. They skip. They could do an easy She-Hulk here. Eesh. Ooh. I'm going to do Goose. Um, we have the extra turn. We're going to do Goose if they don't play a card that's been double powered in Limbo. Uh, they're not going to be able to do a Taskmaster. And so we kind of restrict that Taskmaster play altogether. Uh, they do get a Red Skull off on Curve, but now Taskmaster is not possible. They can't hit this with an Arnim Zola. They can't do the Taskmaster. They could skip into a She-Hulk maybe, um, but we're going to skip. And I guess we skip into a She-Hulk of our own. Yeah, as long as it's not double powered, I guess they could She-Hulk and maybe Titania. They have a couple ways to push a decent amount of power in Limbo, but this really, really restricts what they can do and where they can do it. So the Titania Captain Marvel is big in uh, in Fisk Tower, and then they send us the Titania onto our on in onto our board. What if we did something like this? So this becomes 20, 21, 22. So that brings us up to 27. Is it worth playing an additional card in Xandar? We're already winning in the right lane. They didn't skip. They didn't float any energy. They've already played Titania on the board. Maybe it's more so that we do this instead. We leave Limbo alone. If Captain Marvel moves over there, they still need uh, some additional cards, some additional support in that lane. Um, this is going to push 20 here. It's going to bring us up a bit. It's so. It comes down to a to a gut read of what are they going to play. So the Taskmaster, they could Lizard in the right lane. Ah, uh, they could Lizard in the right lane. We're gonna we're gonna split it. E but if they Lizard, then they don't do a great card here. Maybe we just push for the win in this lane. We already have the win here. Yeah, we're gonna do the Infinite, the She Hulk. It took us a while to get here. The Infinite She Hulk in Xandar, the She Hulk in Limbo. I expect them to do a Lizard, maybe a zero, and then hoping that the Captain Marvel will move over into Limbo to save the day. They do play one card in Fisk Tower to push Titania back into that lane. Um, which I did actually didn't think about. The Lizard. Okay, so it is the Lizard play. It's not zeroed out, though. Um, the, zero, the arrow cannot pull a card because of the Cosmo that they played. And so we get a pretty big push in uh, Limbo. We are able to outpower them in the left lane. We beat the straight Shuri playline with a little bit of tactics. The Cosmo plus the Goose played a big role in limiting what and where they could play, making their playline very, very awkward. So even if they had an Arnim Zola, even if they had a Taskmaster, they just couldn't use it, even if they wanted to. That one feels good. It always feels good to beat a Shuri deck. Let's go ahead and grab it and uh, jump over into the next one. All right, next up we have Brometheus. And the first location is Titan. So that allows us to do the She-Hulk and Infinite for free. <laughs> we don't have to worry about it. And so let's go ahead and play the Viper. Next turn, we're going to play the Goose. We're going to double down on our She-Hulk. We don't have to do any kind of magic plays or ramp plays. All we have to do is... <sighs> cry a little bit inside. They did lose their Destroyer, but we lost our soul. So no Destroyer for them. Could be a Galactus deck because they haven't played anything out onto the board. I'm going to play Goose the Green Goblin. So they can no longer do Galactus here because of the Goose play. And so now, oh, it's beautiful. Now we're going to do Cosmo in the right lane. They have no place to do a Galactus. They lost their Destroyer. Galactus is now restricted and they do retreat for one. Let's go ahead and jump over into the next one. All right, we have our shot for redemption. We have King ATC, and they are running none, none other than Thanos. So uh, Vormir, uh, Vormir would have been great for our hood. We're going to go ahead and play armor there, uh, just so that they can't, I don't know, get rid of any cards. I don't know. <laughs> the the hood not being able to be destroyed for free is kind of a kind of kind of deflating. They didn't play on one or two, so I'm assuming they probably have Lockjaw. And if they have Lockjaw, they're going to... Oh, man. These locations are brutal. Um, it's just super brutal. All right. So we have some really good cards to be doubled down on, though. 
So I'm gonna go I'm gonna go goose in Necrotia. It's gonna be a net zero, so we're not gonna get any kind of advantage from it other than restricting what they can play. Uh, we're gonna next turn double down on our She-Hulk demon and Infinite. We won't be able to play both Infinites unless we get leeched. Um, but otherwise we get a lot of value here. I almost want to snap on them. We're gonna do it. Anytime we get a potential shot to snap on a a Thanos, I think we need to take it. We gotta seize the day. You know, Carpe Diem and all. Victory. The world may never know. It's the mystery card that could be. We're gonna go ahead and take the two cubes. Let's jump over into the next one. Alright, next up we have Ray Ray. And the first location is Sakar. We have three okay pulls. That is not one of them. Oh my gosh, that is the last thing we wanted it to pull into. Like She-Hulk, we can be fine with. Uh, Moon Girl, we could be fine with. Oh man, that's awful. Just unfortunate. Um, the Ironheart coming down in the left lane tells me it's probably like a Wong and Odin that they're eventually going to hit this with uh, like Wong, another owner reveal and an Odin. We're actually going to, I think, let's skip here. Let's hold it for a minute. Let's slow our roll a little bit. We don't have to rush. We can wait until turn four when they drop their Wong in that lane. That way they're a little bit more invested. And, ooh, that's big. <laughs> uh, Death's Domain of being over there is big. We're also going to play our Goose. This is like a free Cosmo. I don't... I, th this, is, this might as well be a showcase for Goose. The Goose has been like a pivotal key card in allowing us to find these wins and just make the opponent's play lines very very awkward and so we can goose here we can cosmo here if they do a doctor doom they have to play it into death death's domain and then it's going to get destroyed so we win this location um just very we're making their play lines very difficult um so the sunspot i was not expecting well, along with the iron heart I was fully expecting something that further supports like a Wong play. So if we Moon Girl, then Cosmo is not our best play line. Let's let's go ahead. We're gonna we're gonna go ahead and Cosmo. We're gonna Cosmo now. Um, we're not gonna double down on our Moon Girl. We're just not gonna do it. The, <laughs> the Mister Negative, and so it's more like a negative serotonin. It seems maybe they have the magic play. Maybe they have a couple of other those those a couple of those other key cards. We don't know. We will never know. But I'm gonna skip and soak. I thought about playing Hood into Death's Domain, and and maybe we do. Maybe we play Hood into Death's Domain. This goes down to two. We could still do the Demon. Uh, we could still. I mean, if they happen to extend the game, we're still decently fine. Yeah, we'll go ahead and play the Hood onto the board. Uh, so the Iron Man is big in the left lane. They can't re-trigger, so I mean, they're, they'll have to play something over here. And then playing into the Collapse Mine is tough for them. We're just going to blitz all of our power in this lane, and then they're very, very restricted in what they can do. Um, and so we put them in an awkward spot between the Cosmo, the Goose, just inoptimal play lines all, all around. And uh, that is where we're going to go ahead and end this video. We went... You guys should see the recording. So I sat down and I recorded and I had about four games for three different lists, but there were so many losses in between. There were so many gaps that it didn't feel consistent enough. I didn't want to showcase something that was inconsistent. We sat down with this one. Besides the two Thanos games that we lost, we went 5-0. and oh, So technically we went 5-2, and two. Uh, but the Thanos players, uh, those, those don't count as losses. I, I tell myself they're not real. We are going to go ahead and end the video here. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to give it a like and a comment down below. And as always, this has been TLSG. Later, guys.